Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salam Khan here. And today with the next property of system and uh, following the order of the book, the next is invertibility. So I give the heading invertibility. So I hope the spelling is right. I say it again and again as the spelling is not right. This is not an English class. No problem. So based on invertibility, we could have either the system to be invertible or it would be non-invertible. So what does this mean? Now an invertible system means that you have distinct outputs for distinct values of inputs. Distinct output for distinct inputs. And, and, and I remember, I'm sorry for the last video, a little blur, right? So while well, that was not a hundred percent clear. It is visible, but that's not a hundred, but I could not record it again. So I'm sorry for that, okay? I hope this one would be fine. So, invertible is a distinct output for distinct values of input. Whereas in the non-invertible system, we may have same output. We may have a same output for distinct inputs. And you know what this means, right? So based on your previous knowledge of functions, you can say that distinct output of distinct input means what? It's a one to one mapping. One to one mapping. And this one you could say is many to one mapping. So this you know from your basic knowledge of calculus and functions. If you don't remember, so you need you you, you used to draw such sort of these circles. I don't know what is this called. This is not a Venn diagram, right? So if you have value A, B, C, over here if you have D, E, F, so, so such is the case. You have a distinct output for each and every distinct value of input. So this system is the invertible system. Now similarly, if you have the uh, non-invertible system, so in this case, what is the case? You have the same sort of a diagram, you have the domain A, B, C, this is let's say the range is D, E. So let's say A corresponds to D, now B corresponds to E and C corresponds to E. So many to one mapping. You, you used to say that the V could be from this side, but the V could not be from this side. Okay, so which means for different values in the range, the domain cannot be the same. But for different values of the domain, the range can be the same. So this is a uh, non-invertible system, right? And we have another point also, for an invertible system, there exists, there exists what? An inverse system. There exists an inverse system For what? For an invertible system. For every invertible system. Now the, the, the mechanism I'm coming and I'm going to explain, okay? So how is this working? If you have an input x of t, right? You have an input x of t, you have provided it to your invertible system. Invertible system right so the system would have some output so the output is let's say uh, written as y of t right now this y of t if this is an invertible system so if it is cascaded with its inverse system it is cascaded with its inverse system and if the output of the invertible system is provided to the inverse system the output of the inverse system is our original input x of t. This is the mechanism. When you cascade, 
invertible system with its inverse system the overall output is equal to your original input so in this case when the output equals the input what do you say the gain is unity you know what gain is you have studies electronic devices and circuits part two part one right so the gain is unity in this case let's say we talk about some examples let's say we talk about some examples so what does the book say invertible system y is equal to 2 times x of t y of t is 2 times x of t so in this case what do you do you make a table for x of t for y of t values so you take some positive value some negative value for 0 x of t is 0 y of t is 0 right if x of t is 1 y of t is 2 if x of t is negative 1 y of t is negative 2 right similarly if you have a negative 2 so you have a negative 4 so have a look for distinct values of inputs we have distinct values of output so which means that this is an invertible system now the inverse system of this is also given which is w of t is 1 over 2 times y of t with inverse w of t is equal to 1 over 2 times y of t so now let us explain so the original input is x of t right the original input is x of t so you give it to this system you give it to this system where you have 2 times x of t it gives you the output which is y of t now this y of t is feed it into the inverse system which is 1 over 2 times y of t so you get the final output to be x of t now if we have an example now if x of t is equal to well this is uh, donated by w right you know that denoted not donated this is your invertible system this is the inverse of the invertible system so have a look if the original input is let's say 1 x of t is 1 so 2 times x of t would be what 2 times x of t would be 2 now if 2 is provided to a system so 1 over 2 it would take up the y of t so 2 divided by 2 this would be again one so have a look the final output equals the final input after the invertible and inverse is cascaded so this system is invertible fine now what do we have the next so well you can have for a discrete time also okay so in the discrete time we we, we consider the example of accumulator we consider the example of the accumulator accumulator now you know what an accumulator does it takes the sum okay so y of n is what this is equal to k running from negative infinity to any value n x of k right so how do we prove if this is invertible or non-invertible we check if it has an inverse system or not inverse system means what that the output of that system will equal to the current input x of n so so can I write it as, I hope you see it, okay. So can I write it as summation k running from negative infinity to n minus 1. Not to n, to n minus 1. So would it be x of, x of k I write it, right? Is it correct? Yes, it is. And then, so if you have remained n over here, so you have to add this n with it. So this is x of n. Now summation this one, till the previous value the sum, would it not be equal to the value, the previous value of the output? So this would equal y of n minus 1 and we have this which is your x of n. So this is equal to what? This is equal to y of n. So now if you bring it to this side, so have a look, y of n minus y of n minus 1 
So this is equal to x of n. So have a look. This is the x of n is the present input, right? This is your present input. This y of n is your present output. Y of n minus 1 is what? It's the previous output. So you subtract the previous output from the present output to get the present input. So which means that this is the inverse system of the accumulator. The accumulator system is this. The inverse is this. So which means the inverse system exists. We are getting the present out, present input again. So this accumulator is an example of inverse system. Is it? Isn't it so? It is. So the book, I believe, don't have any other example. Now the concept of invertibility is important in many contexts. The major application is in encoding, communication process, and this and that. You can read it out from your book. Fine. So I believe we are done with uh, this one. So let me have some more examples for you guys. X squared, let's say. Starting off with some simpler examples. So let's say y of t is x squared of t. So you make a table for this. You have the values of x of t and you take values of y of t. So let's give it some values. So for 0, of course, this would be 0, right? The squared. Now if x of t is a positive 2, so x squared uh, would be what? It would be 4. Similarly, if x of t is minus 2 again, so this would be 4. So this suggests from the common sense that it is a many to one mapping, which means for, for different values of input, we have the same values of output. So which means that this is, uh, sorry, uh, this, yeah, this is a non-invertible system. And over here I wrote it wrong, this is not inverse. This is accumulator is an invertible system with this thing being its inverse. Fine. So the next is let's say y of t is equal to x of t plus 2. So again what do you do is you, you make a table values of x of t and y of t. So have a look. If the value of x of t is 0, the output is 2. If value uh, 1, so the output is 3. If the input is minus 1, the output is plus 1. Similarly, if you check, so you have different values of outputs for different values of inputs, which means that this system is an invertible system. So this system is an invertible system. Find the modulus, let's say, the modulus of x of t, y of t is equal to the modulus of x of t. So again, values x of t, y of t. So if you have a value, let's say 0, so the modulus is 0, you have a positive 2, the output is 0, 2. If you have a negative 2, the modulus of negative 2 is also 2. If you have a 2j or 2i, the modulus is also 2. If you have a negative 2j, the modulus is also 2. So have a look, for different values of inputs, we have the same value of output, which means that this system is a non in whatever system. Fine? Okay. Now, and, and how is the, the absolute calculated? The absolute is calculated as a squared plus b squared under the root. You know this, right? But let me write it. So these were some simple, simple examples. Now, I say we move into one example which could give you a little bit tough time. So let's say I remove this. Okay. So let's say the question says that y of t is equal to sine of t into x of t. 
So over here you have to use your mind a little. Fine. So you take the values of x of t, you take the values of y. You, 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 you do it in a tabular form. Now if the value of x of t is 0, so the output would be sine of t into 0, which is equal to 0, right? Now if the value of x of t is 1, right? So the value of y of t would be sine of t. If the value of x of t is 2, the value of the output would be 2 times sine of t. Similarly, 3 times sine of t, negative sine of t. Isn't it so? It is. So you could say that for different uh, inputs, you have different values of outputs. So this is an invertible system. Isn't it so? Hmm? It is, but I say that I have a question mark over here. It's, it may be invertible, it may not be, but from this uh, explanation, this explanation is wrong. From this explanation, this is not an invertible system. Why? Because I don't know the value of t at which this is occurring. I don't know the value of t. I don't know the value of t. Or let's say for the zero this is fine, but for the next we have to know the value of t. For example, if at, at a particular value of t, sine of t is equal to 1, right? If at this particular value of t, where x of t is 1, so, so the marker is box dropped out, no problem. So at this particular value of t, where x of t is 1, so we can have the value of sine of t to be 1. Say, sine of t is equal to 1 in this case. So the value of y of t would be what? y of t at this particular value would be 1. That's fine. Now at this particular value of t, where your x of t is 2, we don't know the value of t. Let's say if, 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 if we have the value of sine of t equal to 1 over 2, so this would imply what? That the output is y of t is equal to 1 again. So have a look. For different values of inputs, we have the same values of outputs. So now you would suggest that this is a non-invertible system. Now you would suggest that this is a non-invertible. Isn't it so? But before this, you were saying that this is an invertible system. So I can put a question mark. So, which of the explanation is right? You have the same values of inputs, you use different values of output for different inputs. That explanation is right. Or, you, if you say, we don't have the values of t, we don't know the values of t. If we consider it at the values of t, we have the same values. If we consider it, we don't know about it. So we can consider anything. So then this is a non-invertible system. Which one is right? We don't know. We don't know which one is right. So in such cases, when you don't know, you're not sure about it. So in such cases, you don't take the values of x of t as 0, 1, 2, negative 1. What do you do? In such cases, what do you think you should do? Huh? In such cases, take some standard signals as your input. Some standard signals as your input. And standard signals we've seen, you know, you can take exponential signal, you can take impulse signal, you can take step signal. Right? Fine. Now, let's say I take my signal, so, so let I take the signal x of t to be what? To be the impulse signal delta of t. So my y of t would be what? It would be sine of t multiplied delta of t. Now we have the property of impulse. Property 
of impulse. What is that property that you have? Uh, wait, I will check it from here. X of t into delta of t minus t1. So this equals x of t1 delta of t minus t1. Isn't it like this? It is. Where is it? It is, right? So over here now if you see, so your x of t is sine of t and delta of t minus t1 is your delta of t which means that t1 in our case is 0. So this would equal what? Sine of 0. y of t would equal sine of 0 into delta of t minus t1 which means delta of t you would write over here. So sine of 0 is what? Sine of 0 is 0. So this implies that y of t is 0. So this is one case where I took delta x of t to be delta of t, right? Let's say I take x of t to be twice of delta of t. So in this case what would happen? Again we would have y of t equal to x of t multiplies 2 times delta of t. So if I take the 2 outside, so again I would imply this property with t1 equal to 0. So which means that I have y of t is equal to 2, then you have sine of 0, then you have delta of t, which is equal to 2 into 0, which again implies y of t is equal to 0. So for different values of inputs, we have the same values of outputs. This is the justification and it proves right that this system is a non-invertible system. This system is a non-invertible system. So I believe we end it here, right? If you have, let's say, a smaller system, let's say I have y of t is equal to y of t is x of 2t. So again you, you, you check for x of t, you check for y of t. Now x of t I don't know what to take, right? So then x then it has the time scaling because I don't know the value of time. Right? If I take the value of x of t to be 2, so how can I take the y of t when I don't know the value of t? Because this is a time scaling factor. So I cannot do anything with it, right? So I cannot take this 2 over here. Fine. So again I take some standard signal. Let's say I take u of t. So u of t and then you time compress u of t. So over here you can say that this would be u of 2t. Similarly, if you take a negative of u of t, so you can say over here that you have a negative u of 2t. So for different values of input, you would have different values of output and you would say that this system is an invertible system. So I believe I've taken a lot of time at this video, but this was something important, this particular example. You need to know, okay? When you cannot solve it directly, you take some standard signal. Impulse or unit step, these are easiest. That's all for today. That's all about invertibility of the system. See you in the next lecture with another property very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.